from Professional Parents and I will be talking about family work balance today and giving you a few practical tips about how you can try and achieve that in your own life. So first, everybody talks about balance and you hear work-life balance and family work balance and all these terms thrown around. So having done um, study in the past and learning how to try and structure things and really understand what this is, I thought we'd start with the definition of what is balance. So good old dictionary.com, uh, I've looked that up and it says it's either a state of equilibrium or, and I can't even pronounce the other word so I'm going to skip that one, or an equal distribution of weight or something used to produce that equilibrium or mental steadiness or emotional stability. I thought that was an interesting one because as we talk it through, uh, being in and out of balance definitely um, makes you feel either, like they say, a habit of calm behaviour or judgement or a state of bodily equilibrium. So balance is going to be something different for everybody, but what it centres around is trying to find that state of equilibrium. And why would you want balance in, in your life? So I think that for me, having focused on this topic for a couple of years now, it makes you feel happier and healthier when you're in balance. You're living in and providing for your family a calmer living environment. You are more in control over your life in general, so you just feel like things are going um, a little bit more the way that you want them to. You are making more conscious and clear decisions when you're in balance, and you are able to reach your full potential in all aspects of your life, so both personally and professionally. So that is the, the, some of the many, many reasons why you would want to try and seek and achieve balance in your life. So who am I? Uh, I am a mother of a five-year-old and a three-year-old, uh, both girls, and both keep me really, really busy at this age. I am the founder of Professional Parents, which is a network that I started a couple of years ago in Australia when I was trying to find um, balance in my life. I didn't even realise that's what I was seeking for at the time, but I just felt like things were a bit, bit out of control. I had a baby and I was trying to work and it just seemed really, really hard and I was going to play groups and I just wasn't meeting people who were in a similar situation and I created professional parents to try and bring together people who were in a similar situation and it's been running for a few years now and I've met literally hundreds and hundreds of parents and run probably over 40 workshops in Australia where I lived and now I've relocated to the Netherlands. Uh, and I am a dual national Dutch Australian. Uh, you can probably tell from my accent, I'm a true blue Aussie, but I also have uh, Dutch nationality now. After living here from 2003 to 2007, I did the integration course and I now have uh, Dutch citizenship, so ik kan ook Nederlands spreken. And I will likely be living here long term now. We've just re relocated and settled. I also started a business called Zesty in uh, 2007, I started that as well. I've got to think I'm not so great with dates, but so I've been running that for a few years and that is my business where I try and put my work-life balance into perspective and, and uh, apply all the tips that I've learned myself because I'm running that around my family. So I am an experienced juggler. I have spent a few years now, my eldest daughter's five, so I've spent a few years trying to balance family and career. I have also uh, I've run a business, I've worked for a not-for-profit organisation uh, for a couple of years as a business development manager in Australia, so I had that, that was a, um, in principle, a 20 hour a week job and I ran Zesty and Professional Parents around that. So I've been um, asked a lot, how do you do it all? And that started me thinking, what is it that I do and how do I do it and, and why? So that's a lot of what I'll cover in this webinar. And I have been at both ends of the spectrum. I have been a stay-at-home mum with my kids pretty much 24 hours a day. You know, the, the times when you barely have time for a shower um, or to drink a cup of coffee that doesn't go cold. Uh, I've been through that and I've also worked full time um, where my, I've dropped my kids off at daycare early in the morning, picked them up late in the afternoon, heard about what they've done that day. So even though I don't have it all sorted, I am by no means a, I can't tell you all the exact tips about how you can get that perfect balance and be in it every single day. It's something that I've consciously been researching for several years now and I've talked to hundreds of parents on the topic and I have come up with a list of some tips to try and help you do that. 
and I can identify with wherever you are, whether you are a stay-at-home mum um, all the time or parent, even, even dads this is relevant to, or whether you're trying to work full-time. Um, for me, I'm looking for somewhere in the middle, but wherever you are, that's what I'm trying to, to share these tips for. So I'm essentially, I see myself as a lifelong family work balance seeker and advocate. So I have young children now, but I've talked to a lot of parents with teenagers who are still trying to, to find the same things. So why this topic? Why talk about family work balance? It has become a key phrase that you'll hear a lot lately and work-life balance or family work balance, there's lots of variations on the term. I prefer family work balance because I think family comes first and work and then the balance, but what I'm talking about is relevant to, to any of these type of phrases. I've spent about five years of informal research on firstly identifying and now exploring this topic. It took me quite a while to first come up with what is it that's common to all working parents, regardless of whether you've got newborn baby or even, even through the pregnancy and wondering how you're going to manage it all after the baby comes, or if you've got very young children or toddlers, which is kind of the stage I'm at, or, very, or young children, and then they keep growing as they do and through until the teenagers. So what is it, regardless of what country you live in or where you are in your career, whether you work part-time, full-time, what is it that everyone was looking for? And I kept hearing this word balance, balance, I need some balance. So firstly, I identified that this is something that was common to everybody. Even though the specific situation is different, we all seem to want this balance. I ran more than 40 events and spoke to hundreds of parents in Australia and now in the Netherlands and I've also had the conversations online with parents all over the world. I've run a Facebook page with a community of about uh, 1,800 now I think it is and again I kept hearing this term coming up. And it's just the common denominator amongst all of the individual differences and the international differences to try and find balance. And it's not just the mothers, it affects the whole family and even the community because when we are in balance, it, it is better for everybody around us. And the thing that I found most frustrating though is this term got thrown around, but when I wanted to know how to achieve it, how do I get that balance in my life, exactly how, tell me how, there wasn't a lot of tangible and practical advice out there. So that's what I'm trying to offer to you. I consciously thought about what are things that could work in most situations and how could I give you some general tips that you can then apply in your life. Uh, you can obviously learn about it in this webinar um, through Nomad Parents. I am constantly putting things up on the website professionalparents.com.au which in trying to achieve my own balance isn't always as up to date as I'd like it to be but it, it's coming and I've interviewed people there and all their situations are different but again I keep asking how do you find that balance please give us your tips and share your experience on finding family work balance. So let's talk about what it feels like to be out of balance so this is this one side of the spectrum. When you're out of balance in your day-to-day -day life it is just chaos everything feels like a stress and a struggle I notice with myself and my children, they'll be shouting and crying and conflict and it seems to happen with, with all of us. I feel out of control, I feel like I'm missing something, so I'm, I am either if I'm working too much I feel that I'm missing my children and I'm not there and, and experiencing their day to day life, or if I'm with my family too much I feel I'm not getting that stimulation and I'm not um, con contributing and, and continuing my career you feel unsatisfied and it can even come as far as depression and anxiety and um, panic attacks I've seen in a lot in the circles, particularly mums and I've worked at a doctor's practice and we saw more and more people coming through with these symptoms. So being out of balance is when you feel that things just aren't right, you just don't have what you need uh, to be happy. When you're in balance, you feel, like the definition said earlier, that equilibrium. Things are calm and happier, you feel more in control. And something I've noticed a lot more recently, especially with my move from Australia to the Netherlands, and having dealt with a lot of people in Australia, you may have heard in Brisbane, where I come from, about uh, that there were floods recently. 
and there was a lot of talk about resilience. So even when there's big events like that, which affect your life uh, in so many ways, but even smaller things like your toddler throwing the biggest tantrum ever, when you're in balance, you're a lot more resilient and you can cope with those things a lot better. Uh, you have more sense of achievement, so you feel like you've actually done something that day. We've probably all had those days where at the end of the day you feel like I've just got nothing done today. But in fact, if you look at your list, you, you've gotten through a few things. But if you're out of balance, you just don't feel that sense of achievement. There's the flow of things just going smoothly and going well. And for me, it's that joy. It's just that happiness and, and good feeling that things are in balance. I think it's a very important point to make that you have to find your balance. What works specifically for me will not necessarily work for you. So I'm looking at tips to give you that you can then take and then adapt to your own, uh, your own life. Uh, a big thing as well is what is your idea of success? So success for some might be earning a lot of money, uh, for, for others it might be just continuing your career, for others it might be whatever, fill in the gap. What is success for you? So to find your own balance, you need to determine what it is that is going to be that balance and what is going to feel right and make you feel in balance. It doesn't necessarily mean, like you might imagine the scale, 50% family time and 50% work time. You don't need to be checking your watch and going, right, I've had one hour with the kids, that's one hour of work. It can be, um, percentage-wise, there might be a skew one way or another, but you will know when you feel in balance, like we talked about with those different t uh, feelings of, of being in and out of balance. Also, uh, female versus male. I'm talking to my husband a lot about this topic in the, last, uh, in the last couple of years. What is balance for him is not necessarily balance for me. For example, relaxing time for him is sitting and watching TV shows that I don't enjoy at all. Relaxing for me might be getting on Facebook and chatting with a friend or picking up the phone and talking with a friend. So that balance is going to be very different um, between females and males and individuals. Different personalities. So listening to this webinar, you can probably tell I'm a pretty energetic, bubbly personality. So if you're like me and you like to be busy, then my balance means being busy, whereas my husband's, again, using him as an example, is just chilling out and doing, you know, not a lot, basically. Um, and that works for him because he works really long hours during the week. There's also various responsibilities we have. It would be very nice to have my balance this morning. I would have loved a big sleep in. That would have made me feel really calm and content and in balance, but I have to get the kids to school on a certain time. So you need to bring your responsibilities in. There are certain things we have to do uh, as I'm trying to teach my five-year-old whether we want to do them or not. So when you're trying to find your balance, unfortunately we can't all go and sit on a beach with a cocktail in hand, that would be lovely. So when you're planning what your life is going to look like in balance, you need to take that into account. And last but not least, simplicity is something that seems to work for most people. Just trying to simplify what's in your life uh, is, is a good way to find balance. So look for, for the balance that works for you. Is it really possible? Is it uh, something that is actually achievable? It's certainly not easy, but it is possible. There are definite shifts in our society. The biggest shift that I have seen is there are a lot of highly educated women that are being told from a young age, and as I am already encouraging my daughters, you do not have to um, be trapped into a certain type of um, career or a stay-at-home mum or whatever society expects of you. There's big shifts in our society where women can have it all. And also men are starting to want to spend more time with their children. I know when I was young, you know, it was very typical, um, particularly in Australia, and I'm noticing in the Netherlands things are a bit different as well. My dad worked pretty much Monday to Friday and my mum was home with us, whereas my family-in-law, uh, my mother-in-law, was actually one of the first female teachers and she was out and, and my um, father-in-law was home with the kids a lot, which was quite, you know... Um, 
groundbreaking for, for that time, but now it's becoming more and more common. I'm meeting a lot of stay-at-home dads uh, when I do school drop-offs, particularly in the Netherlands. There's a lot of dads out there, so there's, there's shifts in society where it's not just the mums at home cooking and taking the kids to school. Uh, there, there are career women, there's highly educated women, and there's dads wanting to, to spend more time with their kids and demanding that of their jobs and their working hours. Uh, I think it's very important what I am aiming to achieve with professional parents and webinars and all, all the type of work that I'm doing with Family Work Balance is to just start the conversations. I think learning from each other and our own experiences, so saying how do you do it, do you use daycare, do you drop your kids off, do, do your parents-in-law help looking after the kids, um, how does it work, is how we're going to achieve that balance and, and make it possible by just seeing and learning from each other. It is something you need to continuously work on, I'm afraid. You can't just get there and you've got the balance and live happily ever after. You need to, to, to be conscious of it and work on it continuously. I feel that aiming to have more days in balance than out of balance, or even hours if you want to get that, <laughs> that specific, is the best way to go about it. So if you have a day that you feel all those things that were mentioned earlier about being out of control, just think that's a day that's a bit out of, out of balance, tomorrow can be more in balance. And to, success for me is having more days that are in, in balance than out. And just looking at practical ways to work towards achieving that. So that's what we'll talk about now. It, practical tips that I can give you about how to achieve it. So six tips to find balance. This is what I'm going to share now. The summary of a lot of things that I've learnt that I'd like to give you to, sh to apply in your life. So they are, number one, do what you love. Number two, get organised. Number three, to build a strong network. Number four, to learn from experience. Number five, use tools and resources. And number six, to look after yourself. So we'll go through each of those and I'll share some of my experiences and I'm sure that as you're listening, then you can start to think how you can use that in your life. Number one, do what you love. You probably hear this over and over again, but I think that's because it is true. If you follow your passions, if you understand what inspires you and what makes you feel happy and what you're good at, and be honest and authentic, that will help you get that balance. Even small doses of doing what you love can give you the energy to deal with the day-to-day -day life. So you might be thinking, yeah, I'd love to be, I don't know, insert whatever it is that you'd love to do and think that's just not realistic or practical. But if you can even build in just small doses of that into your life and that will lead you to being able to do it more and more. For example, I love photography and that used to just be a hobby of mine and now I'm starting to be able to even bring it into my work. I've taken about 20,000 photos of my kids, um, but doing what I love gives me that boost. For example, again, sitting down and looking at those photos when they're finally asleep at night, it just makes me feel happier. It makes me feel like I'm in balance and I'm doing something that I like. In my career, of course, I've had jobs where I've had to do a lot of things that I really didn't enjoy very much, but being conscious about what my passions are, what makes me feel happy, I've been able to shift my career and my business to kind of fill in that gap. And that makes me feel a lot more balanced because I'm doing things that I love and that give me energy every day, and I'm very grateful for that. Number two is to get organised. Now, if my husband were here, he would be laughing at this because, and even my family pro probably don't see me as the most organised person. Um, things are often all over the place in my house or even when I talk, I've got the <laughs> bits and pieces all through my mind. But by consciously trying to pursue this at the home, in my mind, <laughs> in life in general, it gives me more space to be able to get that balance. So just aiming to get organised. Using systems to help regular tasks run smoothly. So I have on my fridge now, I have a sticker with all the meals for the week. So I'll do that on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday on the weekend when I've got a bit of a time, a, a bit of time to do it. And just having these little systems where I start to plan out 
what I'm going to be doing that week and get my head clearer. I have diaries and I, I combine written. I love my iPhone and my iPad and my Mac computer all kind of talk to each other and that helps me get organized and free up a bit of headspace to feel that I can get that balance. Even more importantly perhaps is teaching your children systems. My daughters, especially my older one who's now going to school, we have written on a, uh, on a notice board up in her room, a, a, a whiteboard that we just, you know, a few euros, stick it on her wall, get a, a whiteboard pen and she really enjoys doing this, is having the system of what she has to do each morning. So she has to get up and she has to get her clothes and get her school bag and have her breakfast and get her boots and all this kind of thing. So having those systems and getting organised means that we can have much smoother, calmer, balanced mornings. She knows what she needs to do and this is a skill that I'd like her to teach her through life. Uh, Ikea is one of my favourite things as well, it's only five minutes down the road, but even having um, all my clothes and socks and shoes organised into, I keep thinking of the Dutch word now, buckiers, containers, makes our life easier and more balanced because when we first moved into this house we had no furniture, we, had, we just moved from Australia, we had very little um, belongings with us but they still seemed to be strewn all through the house and by the time I got organised and I have places for everything, my days are so much smoother, my mind um, and everything is just much calmer and happier. And we've tried different methods. I desperately wanted to go paper free. I love all my, um, all my electronic products uh, to keep me organised, but I found that it just didn't always work perfectly. So I use a combination of notebooks, calendars, written calendars, along with, uh, with electronic equipment. <laughs> but try different methods and see what works for you. And once you find something that works, stick to it. It doesn't matter what other families do. Uh, talk to them, get ideas, but stick to what works for you and your family. So getting organised is one of the best ways to try and find some balance in your life. Building a strong network is absolutely essential to finding that balance. And this is one tip that I can't recommend highly enough and have lived in the last few months since I moved from Australia to the Netherlands. In Australia, people used to ask me, how do you do it all? How do you balance a job and a business and, a ne and um, networking events with young children and occasionally even bake and do housework? But I made a strong network around myself. I had family, I had friends, and for any parents with young children, a very important part of your network is a great daycare centre or school because I could drop my children off knowing they were just as happy and stimulated there as they were with me. They, they loved their providers and they became a very important part of my network. The community, so reach out to people in the community to help and support you. And if you're building a business and trying to balance business and family, business networks are, are great. I have moved to the Netherlands three months ago, but have been very happy to find a wonderfully strong network here already. And that is something that I have consciously done. I have reached out to people that I think I need around me. So I've got some great friends who listen to me when I'm a bit down. I've got friends who inspire me. Working with networks like um, Nomad Parents, it's a great community online where you can learn a lot of stuff and just get a lot of information that would otherwise take you a really long time to get. So that's how it helps you have more balance because you've got all the people around you for whatever you need. You never have to go a long way to, to be able to, to achieve or um, do what you need to do. So I recommend building a strong network. I have to slip in here that social media is an awesome way to do that. I think that social media is one of my superpowers and being good at using social media f has worked for me because anything I need to know, I have a network on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, if I need to do something business-wise or find clients, all, all of those building networks mean that I can get better balance because what I need is not very far Learning away. from experience is crucial because I don't even know the exact saying, but there's something about if you keep doing the same things over and over and expect a different outcome, it's just not going to happen. So if you have days or even months sometimes it might feel like where things are out of balance, 
learn from that. And that is what I have consciously done for a couple of years now. And I feel, even though I, everything's not perfect in my life by any means, I'm getting happier and getting more balanced because I'm learning from um, my own experiences and analysing what's been happening in my days. When I get that quiet time, I'll get maybe a cup of tea or a hot chocolate um, I'm, I'm into at the moment, sit down at night and just think about my day and kind of analyse what's happened, what could have maybe um, been done better. And it's also important to congratulate yourself. Sometimes us parents run around doing all these things. I've even done little, little things to make me feel better and learn from my experience, like writing a list of everything I've done that day, even if it includes things like the washing or getting lunch ready or feeding your kids or getting them out of bed or getting them dressed, you can see what, what fills your time because sometimes we run around being busy, 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 busy and we don't realise how much we're actually doing in one day. So analysing your own experiences is, is important. Talking to others about experience. So sitting down and saying to other parents, either at the workplace or at home or on weekends, how do you do it? How, how, how specifically do, do you get that balance? There's also formal study. So on the other end of the scale, not just talking about being a parent but being a professional, taking formal study. So I did an open university degree. I did a Bachelor of Business in Marketing and Tourism through Swinburne University in Australia. And that is experience that I'm adding to my professional um, career, as well as being able to run my business better. So learning from the experience of my tutors and other students and getting the degree in the end, of course, and knowing that I've been through a, um, formal study is been a very important part of getting balance for me. And it's also helped my career and made me feel that I can, I can get better jobs. Uh, informal study and the internet, who doesn't know about Google <laughs> these days, if you need to know something or learn from others' experience. Last week I needed to um, pump up a tyre on my bike and I had no idea how to do it and normally that is something that would throw my whole day out of balance because I wouldn't have any idea about the different attachments on my bike or how which pumps I should be using. But to learn from the experience of others, I saw a video on YouTube, I can't remember the names, but I know there's two different types of ways of pumps to type up your tyre now. So I've used somebody else's experience to make what could have been an hour of my time into five minutes and I've got it sorted. And one of my favourite ways to learn from experience is blogs. I think everyone should find a couple of blogs that are in their own field or in uh, someone in similar situations and you can learn from their experience because there's some awesome bloggers out there that share lots of tips about their own life and just their own thoughts and feelings so you can learn from the experience of others. Tip number five to achieve family work balance is to use tools and resources and this can be really, really broad. I talked about social media being my superpower, so use it, um, Facebook or LinkedIn for your professional life. There's so many ways to talk to and learn from others online these days, so, uh, so I recommend using those tools and resources. Smartphones, laptops, tablets make life a lot easier for parents these days, although sometimes I have to drag the iPad off my children and my husband to be able to use it. But it's also a fantastic tool that's always within reach and it can be a tool to get more balance, say, in a doctor's surgery while you're waiting. Um, that's been great to keep my kids busy or whatever works for you. I've, I've carried around in my car, uh, we called it the fun bag, and for my children we put in lots of activities for them to do that they hadn't seen. So if I was having a really stressed out day and I had to say run to appointments or take them to do things or even occasionally I've had business meetings with other people who have children, we would have the fun bag to come out and keep them busy. So that helps me get that better balance. Lanyard for keys. Now this might seem really, really simple, but I spent so long searching for keys for the first kind of um, year or so that I had kids and especially when I had my second it was just one of those personal little things that drove me insane so whenever I was looking for keys I'd put a lanyard around my neck and that has my bike keys my house keys and it just was a really simple tip that made uh, life day-to-day -day life easier so um, try lanyards they're, they're really easy to get 
or um, think about different ways you can organise little things and use tools and resources to make your life easier. Online shopping delivery, oh my goodness, Albert Heim <laughs> does to home delivery and I have not used this before because my perception was that it would be too expensive and even my husband as well was kind of like, no, no, I'll take you to the shops because I don't drive here at the moment. But I have discovered that it was only four euros if you had a broad time slot, with, which was when I was home anyway. We usually spent some of our precious family time on weekends going grocery shopping. And who hasn't had the joys? Even my three-year-old ran into one of the staff members the other day. And, you know, it was, just, it was just a nightmare. And it was one of those stressful parts of my life that I thought had to be part of my life. But now that I've had um, the Albert Heijn Santa Claus, the girls were calling him, turn up with all the boxes for us, of course, it may or may not work for you, but for my family, that's going to give me the balance now because grocery shopping is something I only have to do little bits of now and I'm going to plan that once a month or, or um, whenever I need it, I order that online. It saves your previous uh, um, orders, so it just is one less thing that I have to worry about in my life. Uh, preparing meals in advance. So I had one friend in Australia that swore by the, um, we call them crock pots or slow cookers. So she would put the meal on in the morning. I haven't really gotten into it. I'm not the best, <laughs> best chef, but it's a definite tip I think that's worth sharing because if you can prepare meals in advance, some other parents do a couple of meals at a time and freeze them. But those tasks that we seem to think we have to do all the time, there may actually be quicker, better ways to do it, which will free up more family time. Uh, I spoke to a friend the other day who swears by synchronised calendars. Um, she is a busy midwife and runs the business Birth in Holland, and she said she could not live without her family calendar. So her and her husband, she's got four children as well, they all sync their calendars. She's got older children than mine. I don't think my three and five year old are quite capable yet. They're pretty good with the iPad, but I don't think they'd be syncing calendars just yet, although I do have spots on my calendar and up, up on the calendar on my wall at home that has spots for each child. So I can keep track of what each family member are doing. So, so tip five is use different tools and resources. That's just a very small example, but you'll see around you lots of different ways that you can use practical ways to keep your day-to-day -day life running easier. And tip six, which ironically sounds simple, but is the hardest that I've found, is looking after yourself. I have no idea why, but health is so important and I always seem to have, uh, have trouble scheduling in healthy appointments for myself. We have to get to the dentist for our checkup and it just seems to get pushed to the bottom of the list. But if you're trying to get balance in your life, health should be top of the list. So getting checkups, going um, to the doctor and just keeping yourself running Tip top, we get checkups for our cars and oil change and grease and oil change and all that, but we need to, to really look after ourselves better because if you're run down, and I have been there, I've been right at the stretch of being stressed and I've been so run down because I've pushed myself so hard that I just couldn't really function anymore. And then that knocks you out for sometimes even weeks at a time. So you, it's really important to look after your health. And if you're already thinking, how do I fit that in my life? Just simple things like eating well, um, exercising. Exercising is pretty easy in Holland because I cycle and take the kids to school at the same time, so very easy. And a very, very simple but effective thing is to drink water. I'm always trying to have a glass of water there and I've worked in a, in a GP practice and with a lot of health professionals. And just making sure that you get your water intake up can help you um, think more clearly and just get through the day better. Finding time for you, so to read a book or, yeah, we, we'd like to be sitting on a beach in the sunshine, but if you can't achieve that, just finding even just a few minutes to do what you love. And the mistake I used to make was I would find time for me, but in my me time, I would do what others expected me to do in my me time. So my husband or, or other people around me would sit and watch TV or read a book, 
but I discovered that wasn't me time for me. I just, I, I didn't really enjoy it. I felt like I was relaxing because I had to. So me time for me might be um, chatting to a friend on Facebook or calling friends or family I haven't talked to for a while. And that gives me that buzz of energy. Uh, also learning something. I sometimes go to workshops in my free time because I feel like I'm learning something or sort through my photos or things that just make me feel good. A very important but difficult one for many of us super parents that try and do it all is asking for help when you need it. So if you feel that you're not coping, uh, again referring to when I was working at the doctor's practice, I was lucky because a lot of people that worked with me saw before me that I was having trouble getting that balance. So I was lucky to get help from doctors and psychologists when I need it and get professional help. Some of you may be lucky and not need that, but if you do, just ask for it. Um, doctors are very, very supportive. If you just feel that your life is out of balance or you may even be suffering from things like depression or anxiety or panic or things like that, just go and talk to somebody. Talk to a friend, talk to a doctor, um, search online. There's some great resources out there to just help you look after yourself and make sure that you can continue to function for you and your family. And last but not least, I think building strong relationships. Because if you take the time to talk to friends, uh, so many busy working parents are rushing around constantly, working and doing everything they need to do, and don't have time to sit down and just talk to a friend. And I think that that is missing a bit in our society these days. And if your family's not close, if you're an expat and um, or international person missing your family, Skype is great. We sit down with my mum for lunch a lot of days when um, it's evening for her in Australia and we just sit down and just build those strong relationships because we know what's happening in each other's lives. So tip six and the final tip is to look after yourself because if you're doing okay, then you can support your family. So the last thing that I will say to summarise everything is just keep going. If you're living in Holland and watching this here or wherever you are in the world, I have been thinking about this webinar for a while while I've been preparing it and I've been cycling. And I think balance relates perfectly to cycling. You know that bit where you're just trying to get going and you're all a bit wobbly to, to get your bike going? But once you're going, it's smooth and you are in balance and you need to stay, stay in balance. The more you keep trying to load on your life, like I've got one child on the back at the moment and when I first started with that, I actually fell off a couple of times and um, my, my um, three-year-old would say to me, are you all right, mama? <laughs> but, um, but I was trying to get that balance literally um, on my bike. And it was hard at first. I just, I didn't know how to do it. But it gets easier. And once you're going, you, you find that the balance is easier to achieve. And if you just keep going. Of course, you need to stop sometimes. But if you just keep going, you won't fall off either way. Um, and maybe you need training wheels like my five-year-old. Stick some training wheels on the, on the side using these different tips and resources. But the best way to achieve balance is just keep going. If you're not in balance one day, you will be the next. So I hope that's been helpful. It's not easy, but it is possible. It is possible to have a career and be a great mum or dad and be able to have both a successful job or business or career and be a good parent and be there for your children. I'd love you to come and share your own experiences on professionalparents.com.au. I'm collecting stories and interviewing people uh, consistently so if you're interested in sharing your experiences I'd also love to hear your feedback to this webinar so go to the Nomad Parents um, Facebook page or Professional Parents has one and I'd just love to hear from people all around the world what works for you and your family but I wish you all the best for achieving family work balance and I hope that's been helpful and I'm off to pick up my daughter from daycare now because that's part of my balance in my life so all the best thanks for listening